Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover the fundamentals of AI and how to build any AI-based algorithm and what is the recipe behind these algorithms. Okay, so if you guys remember in the previous uh, lecture, we have been able to cover kind of an introduction to AI. We learned that AI is the science that empowers computers to mimic human intelligence. We also covered a quick mini challenge where we discussed several applications of AI around us right now. All right, so what is the recipe to build an AI? Okay, so in order to build any AI model, what we need is three elements. The first element is data. We need a ton of data to be able to train AI. The second recipe or the second ingredient, I would say, to build an AI model, what we need is we actually need the model. We need the algorithm, okay? And I'm going to, in the next three slides, to essentially go perform a deep dive on the data, on what do you actually mean by the data, how to get the data, and also I'm going to cover a deep dive on the model, what do you actually mean by the model. So when I say a model, just think of it again as a mathematical equation. It is just a bunch of equations that can be fed to a computer that try to mimic the decision-making process in humans, okay? So now I have the data. Now I have the model. The third ingredient that I need to build any AI model is the compute power, okay? So let's dig a little bit deeper into the data. All right, so data can come from many sources such as images, audio, video, and text. And essentially, you can use any of these various sources to train AI models. So for example, you can capture images and video data and train an AI model to detect elements in a video. So for example, it can detect humans, it can detect cars, it can detect objects, and so on. You can also train an AI with text-based data. So you can feed AI with, let's say, news information, with um, social media uh, pages such as Facebook or Twitter or any of that text content. You can train the AI with text information as well. You can also teach AI with audio or sound data. And of course, you can feed in as well time series or signal data. Think of, think of it more of uh, stocks, essentially information that you can feed to the AI model to make predictions about future stock prices. And um, not just stocks, of course, any securities such as bonds, ETFs, and so on. So the next question is, where does the data come from? Well. Data could come from multiple sources. So there are available, uh, readily available websites for you. These are, uh, if you guys are new to the data science or AI and machine learning world, there is an extremely famous website known as Kaggle. And that's where essentially it's a huge repository of data from many sources. And all that data you can essentially use and leverage to train your AI models. Another resource as well, which is pretty good, is known as the uh, UCI website. And that's the University of California um, uh, website. And essentially, there you can find data related to healthcare, finance, business, and so on. So let me show you these various websites. So here I have the three uh, websites open. So the first website is, as I mentioned, Kaggle. So you guys can essentially go here and find a ton of data available for you. So there is, let's say, popular data set if you wanted to perform, let's say, restaurant business ranking in 2020. Melbourne housing snapshot. There is mobile price classification. If you wanted to cover, let's say, um, problems or solve problems in business such as, let's say, company bankruptcy prediction, or maybe, let's say, U.S. wildfires, for example. If you wanted to perform COVID, let's say, um, um, leverage COVID data set, 
so you can go ahead and see the progress of um, world vaccination as we speak right now. You should be able to see as well, again, tons of data related to COVID-19 pan pandemic. If you wanted to cover, let's say, economics, you can go here, check out the data sets, education, again, tons and tons of data sets. And of course, you can go here and search, let's say, if you are looking for cancer, let's say, data set. You can go here, search for cancer, and you should be able to see there are 818 data sets that are related to cancer. So, for example, I can open, let's say, cancer, um, cervical cancer risk classification, or maybe breast cancer, for example. You can just maybe click on, let's say, cervical cancer risk. And you, can, you guys can go ahead here, check out the various columns of the data. So, for example, there is age, number of um, sexual uh, partners here, I believe. There is number of pregnancies and so on. And what's actually super powerful as well about Kaggle too, is that you're not gonna just find the data and find the description of the data as well, but you can also go to the code section here, click on it, and you should be able to see all the different codes as well that other people are working on, which is super powerful. Because now what you could do is that you can reference, for example, these, um, uh, these codes and you can essentially use them as a startup code for you to build on, on that. And of course, you can fork some of these um, notebooks. But please note that in this course, we are not going to be covering any code, I would say, per se. But if you guys want to develop code, again, there is a ton of information available for you. And you can also see the results or the outcomes that is generated from all these codes. Okay. The second website that I wanted to cover is the um, uh, UCI. And again, you guys can go ahead here and find a tons of data. There is 585 data set. So for example, you can scroll down, you can find automobile data. You can find breast cancer data and of course you can click on one of them and it can show you the source of the data here you can go ahead of course and download the data if you want and you can find as well uh, some uh, summary or um, information about the data how many instances like how many samples do we have how many features and so on and we're going to cover that in great details when we actually go ahead and start with our first project okay the last website that I wanted to show you guys is uh, a really famous website in the computer vision or AI deep learning world, which is known as ImageNet Dataset. So ImageNet Dataset is essentially a huge repository of images. There is in fact right now 14 million images, okay? And these images are been classified to 21,000 synsets or different classes, essentially. So what you guys can do is that you can simply go ahead here onto, into ImageNet dataset and you can simply download the data. And again, the, this is a huge amount of data available for you. So you can use that data to train AI models. And again, you don't need to go and reinvent the wheel and you know download data on your own. You can go ahead here and search all these repository of images and you should be able to um, train your AI models as well with open source data sets that is available for you. Okay, so this next ingredient to build any AI models is the model. So as I mentioned before is that the human brain consists of billions of neurons that communicate with each other with electrical and chemical signals and enable us humans to see feel and make decisions. So for example, as I speak to you right now, essentially in my brain, the neurons are communicating with each other and it's enabled me to see the slides right now, to even speak to these slides and make decisions as well. And what we try to do when we develop AI models is that essentially we wanted to kind of open that brain and try to mimic that mathematically, okay? So the idea is, and you will gonna hear that term quite frequently, which is what we call it artificial neural networks, or ANN for short. These are information processing models that are inspired by the human brain. And again, 
I know it sounds a little bit intimidating, especially if you are new to this field, but all it is, all what artificial neural networks are, think of it again as a couple of equations, just a bunch of math, a bunch of equations that try to mimic the human brain, try to kind of copy what's actually happening in our brain. And let me show you what do they look like. So as I mentioned, we open the human brain and these again are um, the human brain consists of a bill billions of biological neurons and we try to mimic that mathematically. So what we do here is that we build what we call it an artificial neural network. We bring in again bunch of neurons. So all these black uh, circles here, these are neurons and we connect all these neurons together. So we actually connect the neurons here to all the neurons in the subsequent layer. So we build like a huge network, essentially. And then we train this network, we train that model to detect objects, to, uh, let's say, understand text, to understand audio information, to essentially replicate the human intelligence or human brain. And the beauty about this course is that we are going to build actually super powerful artificial neural networks like this one, but we, without writing any code. We're going to automate the entire process. All what we need to do is to get the data, set up our tool, and we're going to build super powerful AI models, again, without writing any single line of code, okay? Which is, again, super powerful. And please note, that you are going to hear the word deep learning comes into play and we call it deep because now we essentially build a series of deep layers so we arrange the neurons in layers so here we have one layer we here we have another layer another layer and as you increase the number of layers the network becomes more deep right and that's where the term deep learning comes into play Again, think of it as a bunch of neurons, a bunch of equations. We arrange them together in a layered fashion and we connect them all together. And then we can take that brain or that model and teach it anything we want. Okay? The details about the training and what's actually happening behind the scenes and maybe the equations as well behind the scene, we're going to cover that in great details in the first and second project. Hang in there. It's coming up very soon. Okay. So the third ingredient that we need to build any AI models is the compute power. So artificial neural networks requires computational power to be able to learn from the data. So now I have that artificial brain. Now I have the data. Now I need to simply use a computer that can feed that data to my model and make it learn, make it understand what's in that data. And all of that happens in a computer, or that's why we need compute power. So there are AI-based specific chips that are being developed and optimized for AI training. And what's actually super, I would say, scary right now is that the amount of compute has been increasing in an exponential fashion with three months doubling time, which is again, pretty like incredibly scary if you think about it. Like every three months, the amount of compute power is being doubled, you know, which is again, pretty aggressive. And there's a huge, I would say, uh, amazing article uh, written by OpenAI. It's available in here. I highly recommend that you guys go ahead and check it out if you wanted to read a little bit more about the compute and how the compute power is advancing right now. Okay. So that's it. That's all I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. In the next lecture, we are going to learn the difference between supervised learning and unsupervised learning or AI training. So that's all I have. I hope you guys enjoyed this lecture and see you in the next one.